Hey there, this is Adam Higgins, your odd dad out. Tonight's show actually marks the 10th episode of this podcast, and I would just like to thank everyone out there who listens in show after show, supporting this mess of a thing that I do. I'd also like to use this occasion to announce the launch of my Patreon campaign to help fund the growth of this whole show into the vision I had when I first started it. If you don't know what Patreon is, it's basically a service where people like you can connect with people like me and provide monthly donations in any amount to support creators going out there making their things for you to enjoy. And there are even rewards for you based on how much you can donate every month. You may even have your name read here before a future episode of the Odd Dad Out podcast. So if you like what you hear and would like to help, or you hate it and you think I need all the help I can get, I encourage you to go to odddadout.wordpress.com and click Donate. There you'll see just how your support can help make this a better show for everyone. Every punny helps and is greatly appreciated. Thank you again, and now, Charlie, let's get this started. Hey, Dad, it's time for your show. Beginning on that old podcast in 5, 4, 3, 2, 1... Welcome to the Odd Dad Out Podcast, where normal is not my specialty. This is a show about everything and nothing all at once. Here we just kind of grab a thought and roll with it with no clue where we're going to go. I'm Adam Higgins, your Odd Dad Out, and let's get things rolling. Okay, first off, we got to recap things, because uh, it's, it's, it's been a few weeks. And unfortunately, there's, you know, something looming over everybody's head this time of year. Okay, okay, good, number that. No, 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 we're not talking about Star Wars. Fuck no, we're not talking about Star Wars. But it does slightly have something to do with what I'm getting at. Um, if you follow along uh, Odd Dad Out on Twitter or Facebook... Um, you know, in the last week or so, everybody has been out there on, on Star Wars Overload, and essentially, I just kind of got sick of it, and I put out a, a message, essentially, you know, ripping into uh, Star Wars, and I'm so tired of Star Wars, it's making me actually nauseous, and by the end of that night, I actually was sick, again. And if you've been following along the last few weeks, I've been sick a lot. Now, I swear, I'm not always sick all the time. I'm not one of those people that's got, like, ridiculous, I don't like some immune disorder or something where I'm always sick. But I, when I get sick, I get, like, crippling, like, I'm hardly able to get out of bed sick. It's just kind of the way I am. But in this house, with four kids and my wife, we kind of live in that, that wheel where when... Somebody gets sick, they pass it to somebody else, and they pass it to somebody else, and soon enough, everybody in the house has gotten that illness. And by the time it gets to person number six, it may very well roll around and start back all over again. And the next thing you know, everybody's just constantly sick and constantly sick. I've, I've, I've theorized a, a Lysol bomb. Somewhere, uh, S.E. Johnson, Needs to get in line with Raid. I don't know. They might even be the same company. I don't pay attention to those things. But they need to make a Lysol bomb. So you can just sit there and walk out and Lysol bomb your entire house to get rid of all the germs. Get everything so this shit doesn't happen. Actually, this time I think it was food poisoning anyway. Uh, I'm pretty sure that I actually just uh, had eaten some slightly undercooked uh, chicken and kind of poisoned myself. Um, that's what I get for eating cold chicken at two in the morning when I really should have refrigerated it better. But, you know, I put out, you know, the, basically it, it looks like I, I rip on Star Wars and the next thing you know, the force is pissed at me and I'm stuck at home with food poisoning. And anybody who's had food poisoning knows exactly what that does to your system. So, fun week. I wasn't about to do a show sitting there with in 
tolerable digestive issues. But on the same note, which, okay, not really the same note, same time frame, um, this week my brother actually came to visit, and I've mentioned him a couple times in the past, um, and mentioned somewhere in the line, I think, in, I think in episode zero, the episode which uh, shall not be named, um, I mentioned I am one of seven children. I'm actually one of, I'm number three of seven. Well, brother, who's number four, um, came back to visit uh, from San Antonio, and he came with his wife and his daughter, who's about, in, she's, I, I can't remember, I feel terrible. Um, she should be about a year, if I'm, if I'm doing my math right. She's like, yeah, she just turned a year, um, cause I'm a terrible, 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 terrible uncle. Um, but this also means house guests, and I've got four boys who, love their uncle and their aunt and they love and they love the whole family my my boys are great they love everybody they're super super friendly and super social so that's yeah, super social um i don't know where the fuck they got it from cuz i'm not my wife isn't especially social we keep to ourselves we would put a do not disturb sign on our door but we already don't talk to anybody like we we come off as creepy as it is. We don't need to go and put up, you know, back the fuck away from my door. You know, they should make that sign. That's that's the sign we should have. Step away from my fucking door. Um, um, but we're not social. My boys are. My boys love everybody, and they especially love their aunties and uncles when they come to visit. And my brother actually had lived here. Up until recently, oh, well, I guess it's been about a year now. Um, it, earlier this year, he mo- moved back to Texas, um, and so my boys pretty much always had him around for years, and now he's not. And so this was their first visit back, and so they were staying with us, and you know, staying in the guest room, which is the office, which is the studio, which is also another reason why there wasn't a show last week. Um, despite, you know, food poisoning aside, there was also, you know, somebody in the studio. Um, but, you know, my boys were just totally crazy, love hanging around, hanging on, literally hanging on their uncle, um, you know, doing whatever they asked. And I found it hilarious one day, um, my brother's wife managed to get my son, my son's. Um, all to clean the house. I don't know how the fuck she did it. Because she just, they all did it without, on their own. They would run around and like they were racing to clean their room. They were trying to do the best to clean their room and to clean their toy room hideout area and to sweep the floors and clean the kitchen and do all these things. I was like, fuck. <laughs> I was like, you, they're doing it on, on purpose? What, what do you, what do you mean they're, they're cleaning, they're, they're not fighting about it? What the hell? Um, and so, and this was all because we had this big family get together. More on that later. Um, but they were actually able to get my boys to clean the house on their own voluntarily, at least as far as the boys knew it was voluntarily. Um, and this is, and it's just kind of what, you know, comes with the territory, I guess, when you've got, you know, when you've got family over, they, they want to do whatever they can do to appease visiting family. And this, my boys are no exception to that. And, uh, da, 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 da. uh, that being said, you know, I've got me, my four boys, night job, and then my brother, his wife, his daughter, their their daughter, so not just his daughter, and their daughter, um, and it's another one of those you know female syntax sort of things where I say it's his daughter. Next thing I know, I get an angry message from his wife. It's my daughter too. Same thing I had with my wife. So their daughter and tangent, um, but they are all here. And so during the daytime, there are uh, I can't do math. Seven of us in the house because Charlie still had school. Um, and 
we just, you know, going off the obvious, you know, I work at night. Right now it's Christmas Eve. No work. Yay. Um, but, uh, I have, I work at night. I sleep during the day when I can. And suddenly I've got house guests, which means I can't technically sleep. I've got people in the house to entertain, even though they're going to go off and do their thing, but I can't really be sleeping during the day while they're here. And, but, you know, eventually biology kicks in and you just go night, night. And so it actually came in very handy them being around because it meant that if I fell asleep, somebody was still awake in the house, hanging out with the boys and doing whatever and playing games and tricking them into cleaning house and all these sort of great things. And I could sleep, kind of. Uh, I also, you know, was battling food poisoning for the first three days, so that sucked. Um, but it made it possible for me to get things done. And it was very handy having family here for a little bit um, because it just it is difficult some days especially around this time of year because it work basically we're getting slammed right now with everybody trying to get all of their work in get everything we're getting just hit real hard at the end of the year everybody wanted to get contracts fulfilled it's like oh it's the end of the year we got to get this done we got holiday parties coming up we got to get this done and this done and this done and this done and because we've got christmas and new year's are falling on uh thursday friday for the holidays our office is closed thursday and friday which are normally our two busiest nights of the week we're suddenly closed for two weeks the two busiest nights of the week that means that all of our work, plus all this extra work getting heaped on by these companies at the end of the year, is having to get done Monday through Wednesday, which means everybody is just dying with crazy hours. It's hell. Um, I got some guys that worked 18 hours, you know, a day, Saturday and Sunday. They're working nine, 10 hour nights which leaves us getting out of the office around 4 or 5 a.m., which when you're like me and you've got four kids that wake up around 6 or 7 in the morning, you've got to get up. You can't really be getting home that late. And it was actually my first night back to work after food poisoning incident. (sighs) I got... I got back at about 4.30, 4.45, and still had to get up and take Charlie to school that day, and it was it was a nightmare. I was just half dead, and, you know, luckily my uh, brother and his wife actually volunteered to take him to school, and they got breakfast for the boys, and they basically took care of the morning routine so that I could sit down and try and get a little bit of rest that morning, which was great. Um, unfortunately, they also left on Tuesday. I mean, yeah, they have to eventually go back home, but in the meantime, you know, having them here meant suddenly I wasn't at risk of, you know, burning the house down, the boys burning the house down or fall asleep and the boys get into something just from the sheer exhaustion from how much work I've got this time of year. And, incidentally, tonight I'm actually, it is Christmas Eve and I'm recording this, and it's Christmas Eve and I'm recording this because it's holiday season, and everybody celebrates holidays this time of year. Um, it's it's just that time of year. Um, it is, again, it's Christmas Eve this year. I, I, I don't know. I'm not Jewish. I don't know how the calendar calculates Hanukkah. All I know is Hanukkah was like at the beginning of December this year. It was like weeks and weeks and weeks and weeks ago. And, you know, the jump off the big happy holidays, everybody. And I, in this particular instance, I'm not saying happy holidays to be politically correct. I hate happy holidays as, as politically correct. 
It's, it's those people who are trying to make everybody happy or not offend anybody. It's the people that are trying to be non-offensive and want to say happy holidays because they think by saying Merry Christmas, they're going to offend somebody who doesn't celebrate Christmas. And my answer to that is if you're going to be offended by somebody just trying to offer you a, ha- a, a polite greeting, then you've got a problem. And uh, people are getting way too offended by too much shit way too easily this year. It's like, you get offended at Christmas time? Really? It's like, you get offended. It's, it's, it's the holiday season. It doesn't matter what holiday you're celebrating. It doesn't matter if it's Christmas, Kwanzaa, uh, Yule, Festivus. It's all happy. It's all pleasant type of time of year. This is the time of year where you just, you sit down with your family. You, it's, it's like Thanksgiving 2.0 because you get to sit around. You're basically having the same meal you did a month ago, but you get to have that thanks, that big meal all over again with your family. And maybe you didn't get to have some of them over at Thanksgiving. So you get all this, the, the other family together, or it's just your, tighten it, whatever. But it's it's another holiday where you sit down with your family and you get together and appreciate each other. And you know, you sit down, you have a great big meal, you watch crazy Halloween or Christmas specials, you watch uh, Charlie Brown Christmas for the hundred and thirty seventh time. You watch a Christmas story for twenty four straight hours because it's on for twenty four straight hours. Um Okay, I'll admit, I don't know if they still do that. I'm, I'm, I'm placing bets they still do that because we, we cut the cord and so we don't have TNT anymore to know. I'm going to, I'm placing money that they probably still do it because they've done it my entire life. Um, I mean, I could do it myself because I own the DVD. Why I own the DVD of a movie that they show for 24 straight hours on Christmas, I don't know. But, nevertheless, it's it's that time of year. It's 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 a happy time. Why would you be offended by that? So if somebody greeted you in a way that is not in alignment with your personal belief structure. This didn't used to be a problem. You'd say Merry Christmas to somebody, they say thank you. Happy New Year. You didn't, you know, and how often did it happen? It's like you got the old Jewish lady in the neighborhood who doesn't put up Christmas lights and nobody cares. Or, and you know, you say happy, you know, say Merry Christmas to that person and they're Jewish and they say, thank you. Not, oh my God, I'm not Christian. That's offensive. How rude, how inconsiderate. <laughs> Don't be a dick. Just be happy. It's Christmas time. It's holiday season. There isn't a holiday at this time of year that tells you to be an asshole. I'm, I'm 99% sure there's no asshole, uh, holiday this time of year. And it's, it's, it's just about being happy and giving of yourself to others. You go out, you have happy, jolly, fun time with your family. And yes, it's stressful as hell because, you know, shopping and all this and Black Friday is evil. And the stress of Christmas shopping and giving gifts and everything that people heap on to each other. It's, it's not about gifts. It's about being with people and giving of yourself and being positive. But, um, it's, it's, it's just a happy time. It's happy. There's, again, there's no asshole holiday this time of year. There's, you know, even like the parody Christmas songs are still fun, happy, jolly things. And, and what I, I just I I don't understand the mentality of anybody nowadays to be offended by something as simple as a Christmas greeting. Now I don't celebrate Christmas. It's fine. I don't doesn't change doesn't stop me from telling somebody Merry Christmas. It my landlord came over today and brought my whole family a, a gift bag and walks up and I'm thinking he's Middle Eastern at that, but he comes over you know and Merry Christmas. I brought this bag of various holiday candies for your family. And I'm like, you know, it's Merry Christmas. Have a nice, you know, thanks, Tommy. I'll see you next time. And we don't celebrate Christmas. I honestly have my doubts that he celebrates Christmas. I don't know that for a fact, but I can't pronounce this guy's name. And he's obviously Middle Eastern. Now that, you know, blanket assumption, but it doesn't matter. 
he came over. He said, here, Merry Christmas. I was like, hey, thanks, Tommy. Merry Christmas. And go on our merry way. You know, ha, hey, hey, Merry Christmas, merry way. Ha, ha. Um, so I just think everybody needs to get the stick out of their ass when it comes to the holidays. I say happy holidays more because there's a lot of holidays out there and I want to cover all my bases without having to sit there and fucking list them all. Like I think I listed a bunch of the big ones. Um, and my brother-in-law, one of my brother-in-law actually posted up a list of every winter holiday celebrated right now. I think it was like alphabetized and it was, there was like 30 fucking holidays. And I think I saw another thing that says there's 80 something holidays this time of year for different religions and different cultures in different parts of the world. And, and that's just it. It's, it's just where you live and what does your culture say? Are you going to be celebrating a different holiday? I was like, okay, no big deal. I was like most of the world doesn't like a good chunk of people don't celebrate Christmas. A good chunk of people don't celebrate Hanukkah or Kwanzaa or any other holiday that I can't think of because I can, I can, I remember just that one commercial, happy Christmas, Hanukkah, Kwanzaa to you. And so, yeah, I mean, it, but it's still happy. It's happy. Happy. You know, the weather outside is frightful. Okay. That's a bad example, isn't it? Um, <laughs> and the fire is so delightful. I shouldn't be singing here. Oh, well. No? Speaking of offended, and this is a stupid, another stupid thing to be offended for, and it relates to stupid people being offended for stupid things at Christmas time. And I, I'm hoping, I didn't read the article because it was so stupid I couldn't read it. I saw a headline that said there is a group of people wanting to ban the song White Christmas because it's racist. Like, I'm dreaming of a white Christmas. And unless you're talking about playing golf with, with the country club boys in this song, I don't see anything racist. There was nothing racist to begin with. Okay, backstory on this song. Again, I'm from Phoenix. White Christmas was written sitting poolside at the Phoenix Biltmore Hotel. Why were they dreaming of a white Christmas? Because they were at the Biltmore in Phoenix in the winter. Poolside. There is no white Christmas in Phoenix. You are only going to be dreaming of a white Christmas in Phoenix. You sure as hell are not going to see it. And that's the song, people. Really. It's just like the ones I used to know before I lived in the desert where it doesn't fucking snow. Um, it's like the entire song was nostalgia, and it's talking about snow, people. It's not talking about race. It's not talking about anything that anyone wants to get all butthurt about. It's a song about missing snow because you live in the West. It's like you live in the Southwest where it doesn't snow. The song could easily be written in L.A., but it was written in Phoenix. You know, go Phoenix. But people really just offended by White Christmas. Really. Just, yeah, I, I have nowhere to go with that. Because cause racism and exaggeration and things like that, just I, I don't understand them. I don't understand the stupidity involved in them. So for me, I, I, I can't argue the, a lot of that stuff. Because, I guess, to make a proper argument, you have to understand the other side of the argument. And I don't understand racism. Therefore, I can't make any sort of, like, counterpoint or argument, I guess. Like, my whole argument is racism is stupid. Um, you're stupid for being racist. And, Valid as my point may be, it's 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 a bad argument. Sorry, it's like you would fail in in debate if you that was your counterpoint. Um, but you know, you know, I, I'd say we're getting sidetracked, but it kind of relates to just the holiday spirit. You know, it's like stop being an asshole, be a good person, go out, 
give, give to charity, give to the homeless. Um, you know, you don't need to buy, spend a million dollars and spend all this money and go into debt buying the newest toys and the newest things. It's like my boys get very little, but they appreciate what they have. Um, we don't go out and buy the newest video games and the newest things, but we get them things we know they like and know they'd appreciate. And they, they appreciate it because they don't spend the whole year fearing the elf on the shelf, which is another fucking thing, but I'm not going to get into the whole elf on the shelf thing. Um, uh, cause it's just fucking stupid. Um, but I like, think they, they don't sit there in fear of, oh, Santa's not going to bring me the new uh, video game, or I'm not going to get that new toy. That's not the way they were raised. And they just, like, they know holidays are when we spend time with family. They know that's when we're going to invite everybody over and have a great big dinner. That's what they think of the holidays. Of. That's when they're going to get to see their uncles and aunts and everybody's going to be around. And they're just, they appreciate the time and the experience and the energy of just the positivity at this time versus the, oh, how many presents do I have under the tree? And like, oh, I got this giant five foot box. And it's like, oh, I, it, I got more presents last year. And that's, that's not, we, I'm, we haven't raised our boys that way. And, so we keep things very small. Um, but, you know, they, we don't do things like that, I guess. And there are so many people that, and I, I hate to use the old argument like everybody says about how Christmas has become too commercialized and too materialistic. But I think this time of year, people get very materialistic. Even in the, like, even when you've got your heart in the right place, a lot of people will just want to show their love and their care and that look, you know, I'm, I'm being good and I'm giving, but they get to a point where they start showing off and how much can I buy? How much can I spend? What, how much can I do to show that I'm giving? I want to give everything to everybody and it's, it's a bad, it's, it's, it's a slippery slope and you end up just biting yourself in the ass. It's not worth the headache. And you can be a great person and give to people. And, you know, it's, it's, it's about love and, and positivity and good energy and just being happy. Just try and make the best of the world and be happy. And it's probably the least assholey show I've probably ever done. Um, but it, it's Christmas time. It's Christmas Eve and, I'm trying to be happy out there because it's Christmas Eve and I just got a, had a great week spending time with my brother and I just got to have a big Yule feast with all of my siblings here with our mom for the first time in 10 years. And this has only happened twice in 21 years since I was a kid and moved to Texas and since I've moved back. There have only been two holidays where all six kids, all six of my mom's kids have been together for the holidays. The first time was 11 years after, uh, the split. And then this year it's been 10 years since the last time we were all together for the holidays. Um, which was always difficult because of the, you know, some living in Texas, some living all over Arizona and different things. And so we had a good time this year. And so I'm kind of, even, even post food poisoning, I'm on a good week, you know, and so I want to share that with everybody else out there. Um, but that being said, we are running low on the, on the, on the old TikToks this week. Um, wow. That was a really cheesy kind of sort of stupid way to put that. But either way, I think we're going to call it a show for tonight. And remember, everybody, follow along on Odd Dad Out on Facebook and Twitter. Visit Odd Dad Out 
www.wordpress.com to get all the back episodes, uh, donate on Patreon, and just be cool to each other, guys. I just want to wish everybody out there a happy winter solstice-based holiday to you all, and a pleasant oncoming calendar cycle as well. Thank you, and good night from the Odd Dad Out Podcast.